Fear is not respect. But some people are convinced that it is. Some of this is leftovers of religious uh, values. You know, people have a fear of God and they mistaken it somehow for a respect for God or a loving of God. And it's no, it's a fear. And people have that same sort of attitude towards the police, no matter what the police become. It's this idea that we should respect authority even though it has more to do with fear than actual respect. Um, police weren't always like this. Police weren't always like what, we, what I showed in my last video. They haven't always been like this. Police used to be those that serve and protect the public. Well, now they serve and protect their own interests and the interests of uh, profit uh, prisons and the interests of making money off of the public. You know, when, uh, as, as people said in, in the comment sections, you know, when, when you can get some hefty ticket because you were riding on an empty street on, on the sidewalk, on a bicycle, and you didn't have a, a, a headlight on your bicycle, and you get a hefty fine for it, even though you weren't, you weren't endangering anyone. Um, it just kind of says it all, you know? When the laws themselves become more important than the reasons for those laws, yeah, there's a problem. Things weren't always this way. There's... Why do we put the lives of police over the lives of regular citizens? Why do we do this? How is this acceptable? How does that work? Why, like if, if one cop is killed, we look at it like some, uh, like that cop was some sort of national treasure or something. And I'm not saying it's a good thing that, that someone gets killed, but when you compare it to a regular citizen getting killed, if they haven't, they're not some famous person, uh, yeah, we, we, we just put them up on this huge pedestal, like their lives are so much more important than everyone else's. Why? We can say, oh, well, they put their lives on the line. Uh, not really anymore. Not when they have the gear they have. Not when they have the policies they have. Not when they go after people in the way that they do. With the ways that they go about things, they're rarely putting their lives on the line. They're putting everyone else's lives on the line, not theirs. So, you know, how, how does that work? Where, where, where do they deserve such massive amounts of respect? You know, pr police primarily care about their clan. Those are the people they care about, not us. And unfortunately, a large percentage of those that join the police force do it because of the power it can give them. And, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now, granted, there are some people that, that get into the police force that are good people. I've ran across several of them before. But eventually the system corrupts them too. How can we defend this? How can we defend the country turning into this? You know, we've got people like Live Life. You need to respect authority. Oh, that's nice. So totalitarianism is bad, b b b b bad, unless police do it, and then it's perfectly fine. Police brutality is fine because you didn't comply. You didn't comply. You didn't comply. 
even if people completely complied and were like, yes, officer, yes, officer. Well, if someone isn't actually hurting anything, why do, does, why is uh, police brutality, police uh, violence from police, uh, uh, why is that somehow acceptable? Oh, because they're dealing with thugs. When it's shown that you can be as respectful to them as possible, but you fit the wrong demographic, you're still going to be either beaten, uh, humiliated, or treated like absolute crap in some way where you are herded around like the way that we herd around other animals. How, how did this ever become acceptable? How? And the more that I, I really look at it, how do we find it acceptable what our government sends our military out to do? Why is it not considered terrorism when it's driven by a government that isn't basing it off of religion? Why is it only considered terrorism when it's based off of something that isn't an, an official governmental policy. Our government makes our military terrorists across the globe. We put fear into people. We export fear. Even in the marketplace, we export fear. Don't piss off the United States. How is this acceptable? How are the actions of our government, which end up turning into the actions of our military, which ends up turning into the actions of our police, how is this acceptable? And you could say, well, it's not acceptable, but it's just the way that it is. <laughs> and we shouldn't try to do anything about it. We shouldn't even talk about it. We shouldn't mention it. Be quiet. Shh, just take it. No, shh, shh, just take it. Look at all the benefits we have. Shh, shh, just take it. In the past, I've talked about the three pillars that our society is based off of. Control, manipulation, and ownership. And when you look at the way that our government... Uh, tells these groups of people who we put into the elite category, police and the military, um, we can really, really see how negative these three pillars can be. Shh, shh just take it. Don't talk about it. Because if you talk about it, well, that will be uh, the sooner the government will collapse. And let's make no mistake about it, I, 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 the, this government is going to collapse. How soon that will happen, we don't know. To me, it will be within 10 years. Could be shorter could be a lot shorter depending on what happens over the next year. Of course, if, if we actually start to make major changes to this system, uh, maybe we can extend it past that, that 10 years. But it's doubtful. So yes, by, by all means, let's, let's keep worshiping the police. Shh, just take it. It's important, right? As long as you fit the right demographic, well, you're okay. Well, what happens when your demographic is no longer safe either? Shh, just take it. Nice. <laughs>